concept of At Home started uh, when I was not satisfied by the soccer playing robots, uh, sometimes doing things which might be dangerous because they don't understand the world. So uh, I started to discuss with many people, uh, what should we do, what, uh, you know, what new things can we do? And people were like, yeah, we should do something new, but what? So it took about uh, three years and many discussions uh, to come up with a, a generalized procedure to have uh, a contest, competition. And in 2005 in Osaka, we presented this, uh, Thomas Wispinter and me, uh, uh, to the trustees. And they were got very excited by it. So Robocop at Home is really addressing the service robots that uh, play in domestic environments. And the goal is really to have them as natural as possible, interacting with humans in a very typical home environment. So the, the robots uh, need to, in, the, in an initial round, to go through several different types of uh, things like navigating, detecting objects, and recognizing them and grasping them, talking to people to understand commands that the person of the home needs to, to get interpreted. Um, they also can follow people, not just straightly navigating or leading people to some place of the home or even outside of the home, these kind of things. And there's a, a particular task which is quite interesting in the first round and also in the second, which has another type of tasks like the ones I described. But this one goes across the two rounds and it's interesting, it's called General Purpose Service Robot. In that one, you can actually order the robot to perform a sequence of three of these tasks, and he has to interpret that, map that into actual tasks, and then execute them, which is even more general. I think the major challenge, uh, if I have to, to, to pick one, is to have uh, human-robot interaction as natural as possible. And then there's really this push all the time of the environment being as natural as possible as well. So uh, the league really always pushes that the objects are the ones we have in a regular home uh, and that uh, even the, the, the interaction, which is by speech typically, is based on the large set of possible sentences. And, uh, and so it's usually the goal. It's very diversified compared to other leagues because it has a lot of different challenges and you have to address them all one by one. I think that uh, this there's Currently, uh, a large uh, potential for robots to be used in, in uh, domestic environments. And of course, uh, there are things here that I think will make it to the homes. Maybe others don't. And uh, another thing which is very typical from all the leagues in RoboCup is that I think there are some of the things they are developing may be useful in other aspects that don't even have to do with home environments. And, and so be used in the future in these other environments. But I think many of these here, because it really pushes things to be so natural, will be used sooner or later in home environments. There are various challenges that, that we face. Uh, yeah, one of the things is that the robot needs to be able to do a large number of things. And that makes it diff yeah, just difficult. Furthermore, uh, we have an environment that's changing all the time, so before we we, go to, we came to this venue, we didn't know what the RoboCup arenas would look like. So you have to be really robust. Even during competition, before every challenge starts, uh, minor changes to the environment are made. So we have to be able to, to be robust for that and, uh, and take that into account. RoboCup at home has uh, teams from all over the world indeed. So uh, we're from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, there are a couple of German teams that have been competing for a long time. Uh, a Chinese team has been very strong. Uh, over the past years. There's a Japanese team that's always competing, a number of Mexican teams. So uh, I guess uh, every continent has, uh, has at least one team that's, uh, that's competing. There are many tasks. Soccer is only play soccer <laughs> and rescue is only rescue, but we have to uh, develop about eight or ten tasks so some of the challenges in uh, RoboCup at home uh, are, for example, uh, following a person and knowing who is the person that you have to follow. Uh, another one is uh, speech recognition and understanding. This is uh, very difficult because we usually have an audience, uh, which makes a lot of sound. And another one is uh, mobile manipulation. So you actually have to find an object and bring an object, manipulate an object. Uh, facial recognition is uh, really important because we, if you have a robot in the house, you don't want your six-year-old kid actually to uh, uh, tell the robot to get a beer and bring a beer. So the robot has to understand who is who 
what are the kind of tasks that the person can uh, tell you and uh, which are the tasks that you can actually do with the person. And that six-year-old child might not be distinguishable from a robot perspective from a very small adult. So you have to do way more than just measuring the height of a person. Um, the thing you see over here is a laser range finder. We use that for uh, localization and navigation. So it scans the environment and it, it sees the walls, it sees the people uh, that, that walk around. A little bit further up, you see the uh, body. It's uh, mounted on a ball screw spindle so it can move up and down. And then we have these two uh, arms that are more or less anthropomorphic. So they got seven degrees of freedom that are more or less uh, comparable to the degrees of freedom of the human arm. And the size is also uh, similar. The head of the robot basically uh, consists of a Kinect camera and a video microphone. Uh, the Kinect camera provides uh, both a 2D image of the environment but also a 3D point cloud. Uh, which has depth information, obviously. So uh, that way it's better to use this for navigation, for object recognition, for person recognition, etc. Furthermore, the microphone is used so that we can interact uh, with the robot uh, by speech. It also has a speaker. So uh, when we do the RoboCup challenges, the only way we are allowed to interact with a robot is by speech. So it's a really crucial part. But that's why it's so uh, prominently uh, present on, on the head. And that's basically uh, how our robot works. Well, one point that is very exciting is to, to see all the, all the teams um, having a real um, passion to program the robots and to achieve here certain goals um, with the robots in, in the competition. So that's at least one very, very nice part. Um, it's, it's also that the, the teams are not only competing against each other, but they are also exchanging knowledge and talking to each other. So, so there's one community part. Um, another part is that uh, we also like to, to be with the audience, so also to show the regular people outside so what is done in research, what are the steps that we need to do in order to, to get robots into, into the homes and into applications. Um, so this is a quite um, yeah, fascinating perspective that might happen in perhaps 10 years and we have made the first steps. Yeah, so for young people, they um, are in a time where the many, many robotic platforms are just one step away for getting to real fascinating applications where humans are tightly cooperating with robots. Um, so the, the wars between humans and robots are currently falling down because the robots are getting more compliant and more safe um, to humans. And this is a very exciting time because you can do so, so many things also from an engineering part and having fascinating applications of human very tightly interacting with robots, collaborating with robots, building things together with robots. So I think this is really starting off now.